name is uh, Russell Scott from scottcarvings.com and uh, today I am going to carve a Viking bust. Uh, here is my pattern. So can you see it from there? Can you? I am going to attempt to get the pattern easier this way. Uh, put the pattern on my website again, scottcarvings.com. The piece of wood that I am working on <coughs> is about, where is my ruler? Uh, this one will be, I think I found in this particular case, I found just a piece of wood that fits. I made it fit, made the pattern fit the wood. This is at six by uh, about three and three quarters ish on a two and a half inch piece of wood. So again, you can uh, adjust the size to fit. Now other uh, Vikings that I've done, I've done different styles. Um, here's one particular uh, style, just a simple simple style here. Uh, as you know, um, history dictated that we, that the Vikings did not have horns. And, uh, but um, I still like to put something on his head. Uh, we got this Viking here. This is a Viking that um, I am going to teach in the near future. He is going to uh, be holding the, the sword over his shoulder. And I like doing some of these in pieces, and I think that's what we're going to do with my bust. The bust is going to be similar to this in that he is going to, or what I'm hoping, is that he would have the a hand coming out. And what, what I have planned is... I'm going to take the sword hand and part of the wrist in a single piece and then put the sword on the shoulder so it kind of gives that just like this you know most of the body is missing uh, that's what I'm going to do that and then also this the one I'm going to do <clears throat> is going to have a shield now the shield I'm still <clears throat> debating as far as having either a full full shield or a maybe you know like a three-quarter shield you know where it's kind of cut off and look very artistic okay so it's going to be similar to that I I am thinking here's another one that I've done another bust uh, I'm going to have him it's gonna be kind of similar to him in that I like uh, the the beard to come down as in a ponytail, two ponytails, pigtails, and he's going to be more. I like, I like this one here. This version, he's got some nice, strong cheeks. Now I got this one here as wearing a feather or feather, pfft, wearing a wing, wearing wings, and I think I'm going to do something similar to that. So there's another one of my variety, and I'm going to kind of create one that's semi-similar to all of them. And the first thing I'm going to do is what we usually do is draw that center line. Make sure you got the grain going in the the correct direction that you want. Well, before you cut it out, of course. Well, it is kind of hard to draw a center line on something that's not straight. Now, what I'm going to do right off the bat is that I am going to um, remove some bark, some bark. <laughs> Remove some of this wood. I also carve barks too, as you can imagine. And we're going to kind of carve a lot of that off. And the shoulder is going to come back a little bit. So some of that is going to go. But we don't want too much to go here because we want to have the beard. So we're going to figure out what we're going to do with the beard. Are we going to do a little bit of pigtailing there? A long mustache, whatever. So you got plenty of room to do that. Okay, let's put, I'm going to use a chisel. This is going to be the boring part. I'm going to put on my chisel glove. And I have a, a number five palm chisel. And I'm going to cut, and I'm going to cut this down. Now I'm going to turn the video off uh, right now, and when you come back, uh, you'll see what I have done. 
that way uh, it'll uh, eliminate a lot of time of you just sitting and watching me just cutting away here. Now I'm back. I uh, What I did is I just uh, cut like at about a 90-ish degree angle so it's the form where the nose will be and I've kind of brought it out like this. And I didn't want to play too much around here because uh, I'm not sure. Well, I do. I, I am going to put in uh, some of those pigtails in there. Uh, and then around here, I wanted to be careful because I'm going to put a, um, a shield here. And sometimes what I like to do is just kind of take the corners off because then it's a lot easier to handle. And then I carve some of the back off. Just to round it off a little bit so we can uh, not waste time doing just this kind of general stuff. What I like to do is in, when I start carving around the bust area of any carvings and any uh, uh, human carvings is I like to get the, the nose and the eyes started. And, <clears throat> excuse me, since the shoulder is going to be here, we want to find out where that head is. Some of that shoulder is going to be rounded off. Now, what I'm what I'm going to look for is I'm going to look for where the skull is from the bottom. Now he's going to have a helmet, so the skull is probably going to be about here. So the eye line is right in the center. There's your eye line. You're probably saying that's not right. Well, that's because I'm there, so you can see it. Now I'm looking right at it. And halfway between there would be with the nose. Now generally, uh, as far as uh, carving the face realistic, it's actually one-third down. But since this is a character and we're carving in wood, we like to have a little extra wood to do some forming because I'm sure it's going to go a little shorter than that. And like I said, I like to get started with, um, with using the knife and using little chips, carving chips, just to get started. Take the nose. I'm trying to think a little bit. No, I think we'll. I think we got a lot of play in there. I said I want the helmet. But then his head is still going to go up in there, in most of the helmet. So, and raise it a little bit. Because I want him to have a bigger, bigger schnoz there. All right, let's get cracking. I have to take a knife cut away from the cut away from the nose deep here, and then you come up because you want to don't want to dig into the cheek. Well, this particular character, I mean, if you goof up and you you uh, make a scar, I mean, I guess it's okay because after all, he is a, a rough and tough character. Gonna go deep and then shallow. And then you're going to go shallow all the way here. We don't want to go too deep because uh, you may leave some scars up there. I'll show you. Again, it probably would be all right in this particular case. And then I'm going to carve parallel to here. Same thing here, away from the nose. I'm going to go shallow to deep, because we're going to go deep at the bridge of the nose. And all we're doing is we're just really establishing where the nose and the eye socket is, so then we can, we can carve anything and everything else around that. Oops, sorry. Parallel. Sometimes I get carried away. And I forget to tell you what I'm what I'm doing. Now we're going to carve cut here and bring in the nose out. Let's see, am I getting out of the flame frame here? 
Now I want to carve this back about 60 degrees. Oh, I'm sorry, 30 degrees. Like that. And then we want to do right where the eye line is here. The eye line is put back in for now. I'm going to carve to the eye line at a 45 degree angle this way, 45 degree angle this way. Cut that chip out of there. There we go. Getting started on the nose. Okay. Now uh, what I want to do is I want to find out where the face is by putting the center line in first. See, now we know where the nose and everything is going to start. We can always shape, make bigger, smaller, whatever. Uh, but uh, like I said, here's I want to know where the helmet is. Helmet is here, so we'll have extra eye, eye, eyebrow there. And I want to come down at an angle a little bit. Not too sharp. You know, you don't want him to have that casual look. Well, he's going to be, since he's going to be carrying his sword on his shoulder, going to be semi-casual for a Viking on his way off to war. Now I want to figure out where the um, cheek is. Now I want to have him to have sharp cheeks. So let me, let me put this in first. As we put this, it's almost like putting in a Santa face for right now. I mean, he's a beard mustache, but... This is all here. But what I really want to do is, well, I'll carve this out. I think it'd be best if I put in that cheekbone later. I mean, it's going to be kind of sort of like this. Like this kind of a thing. Oops, backwards. The mirror. Sort of like that. Nice. Scandahoovian, as we say here, or used to say here, Scandahoovian. All right, now uh, the mustache. I'd like to have this mustache to come. Well, before we do the mustache, well, the beard is going to come. Since the mustache is going to come down, I mean, if this is a Santa Claus, you just simply put a little mustache in there. But since I want the mustache to come down, like this guy here, this is what I'm kind of aiming for, is his mustache coming way down. And therefore I want the beard to come down. So, I, so in this particular case, I like to form the beard first, because we can figure out where the mustache is. So it's going to kind of go, go around like this. And I want to keep it going because it's going to have... I'm just kind of penciling in for right now. I don't want to be... Here, here's the thing. I don't want to be too separate between these two, too far apart. And I don't want to be too, too together either because we've got to be doing some gouging in there. I hate having to gouge in there. So there he is. And then I'm trying to think too, on this particular base, I'm going to move it, I'm just doing some thinking here, is that probably like a lot of this is going to go away. You probably could have done that in a cutout if you wanted to, all that's going to carve away. But I'm going to leave it for now, because uh, I like to leave a lot of wood because I may change my mind one way or the other. So now we're just getting started here, and I think uh, it's starting to take shape already, just on the pencil, okay, in the back here. I notice I got a hole there. Huh. Wonder what he's wonder what's been going on there. So the beard is gonna come around this way. It's always good to get things penciled in. Now you can put if you want to, you can put uh I think we'll do that. What the heck? Well no, it depends on Yeah, see now that I have all this wood, I mean if you want to, I'll just go through the motion and put a ponytail on the back of this guy here so then that means we won't cut that out so you change a plan and now we got that pencil in now it's kind of off a little bit I'll have to think it through and then one more thing and it's still too early the thing I wanted to do is, is the way he is clothed like this guy here 
if you notice he has a um, you have this this front here and then you got a shirt so it's got like it's two layers oh I'm sorry is that better I'm gonna do something similar to that now that I think we could just do that later we just simply keep that in mind you know it's gonna we just want some extra there and and so on you can probably pencil it in so we can not forget it Okay, already looking pretty good as far as what we're going to do now. We just simply have to cut it out. Now, what I'd like to do when I, after I pencil something in, uh, I'm a guy who likes to use a lot of knife than chisel when it comes to um, where's my chisel when carving stuff like this. But I like to use a chisel to get things started. Like for example, here what we drew in, I will just to kind of get things rolling here. Oh, that kind of goes, where it goes that way. And I want to get the beard in and the, and the body shaped. Now we can still come across here before I put the mustache in. I like to have kind of this, I don't say a teardrop you know, where it's wider at the bottom and it kind of comes up. I'm doing that to my uh, Santas a little bit too lately. Same back here. Actually, the thing is, I'm not having troubles cutting it, just having trying to cut at an angle so you could see. I mean, if I were to carve it, I'd be carving it right here. See that? No. Well. But I would rather that you did get what I'm getting here. So I'll try not to have a slip of the chisel here. I do like carving uh, Vikings. I mean, uh, while well, the thing is, is I'm I'm from uh, Minnesota. That's where I'm carving from right now. And uh, of course, you know we have a. Uh, football team by that name and of course it depends on this viewing uh, how are they doing uh, they're doing good now or... but anyways this area is uh, is uh, German slash Scandinavian is uh, the main immigration uh, back in the 1800s I mean we're all melting pot right now. And by the way, in Minnesota, we really don't say uh, one of those movies that depict us in Midwest language, yeah for sure, and all that stuff. And, uh, okay, I'm gonna carve the, get the cheeks and this going. And we don't say don't you know all the time. I don't even say don't you know at all. See a lot of hey, are you listening to me? Hey! Of course, that's probably not just Minnesota, it's probably all the way around. Okay, we're just uh, getting things started, and, and it's just a matter of kind of cleaning things up. I think I like, uh, I think we're pretty good with this right now. Just to bring it out. Got that from uh, matter of fact it was a kids show when I was a kid even before when I was a before I was even born we had uh, the guy's name was uh, Axel and his dog and he would uh, it's a kids show and of course he'd have a lot of stuff going on and com and cartoons and blah 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 and and that's he had that uh, Scandinavian accent. And uh, that's, he's the one that coined the French Scandinavian. Okay, let's get things kind of rolling here. Let's see if we can start on the chisel here. Even though I told you I really don't care for the chisel, but I think 
I do like as long as it comes at an angle here that's easy for me to do All right there's the chisel this one is a number five wide I really love this chisel this is an excellent chisel I'm not to name names but a particular uh, wood carving instructor um, suggested it after I took one of his classes and uh, he likes the he said he likes the metal more metal the better and said so, all right I'll try it and he is absolutely right I love the metal same with a larger um, rough out knife I want to be careful like I said on this side here is going to be kind of difficult because I do like the chisel better when I'm doing camera because I just the angle of how I'm cutting just feels like something's going to give and we're going to have some red paint on here. We don't want to see any red paint. Well, yeah, he would, you know, especially dried blood on him would really kind of pop out, but you know what? I'll save that for another time if I do cut myself and I'll just put that now. <laughs> Let me move the camera about a little bit here, just a little more this way, because I can see I'm still bringing it to me, and I need to stand, push forward, and I don't want to hit the camera either. It is a little closer to me now. Oops. Now this is not going to be really clean, it's just enough to to get things started and we'll clean it up later and we'll go deeper later. Get that thumb out of the way. And get this up higher. I just wonder if I should just pull this down just a little more. I have my tease, isn't it? You see my tape there? That was supposed to be my border there. Let's get back to work. So all I'm doing is I am uh, raising my chisel mark, my V-tool mark, to kind of, I want to say... Um, Permanentize, commit. I like doing the video over my camera because um, it shows like you're over my shoulder and you're and you're watching. And I teach and students as I would sit down next to them and they'd look down. I just don't like having it on my knee and then you have to look across and and it's in the wrong direction and what the heck am I doing and I've always hated that it's like what the angle you got there I just don't like the angle this particular piece of wood is a little difficult but not that much okay getting started there moving right along now I take my knife there goes my, my pattern. This is really an odd shape to hold on to when reaching out and going in front of the camera. Now what you're supposed to do, is you're supposed to put your thumb, this thumb on the knife, but I've got to a point where I've... Uh, Got into a habit of doing this. And it's okay, I mean, you still cut. The thing is, is that this thumb gets tired after a while. But I do have more leverage that way. Just getting the saw marks off and rounding things off a bit. 
we can get started. Actually, we are started. I think we're doing pretty decent for starting, for starters. Oops, burying the tip of the knife. I don't want to do that while I'm cutting. Okay. Where's my pencil? I want to make sure that I put this in before I forget. Now the beard, the beard, the must, the yeah, the beard is going to come around here. I want the beard to come out a little bit, even though it's already come out. I want to have that light right about there. Get that chisel. I want to establish that so as not to get too carried away and start whacking things off and. the hand. Oops. Uh-oh. Well, we'll still... Hair is imperfect if you make a mistake. It can still go one way or the other. Same with clothing. <coughs> and you can use chisel. You can choose chisel at any time. We're going to be using chisel around the eyes and nose this time. Uh, my smaller carvings uh, videos where I have the carved the nose, I... Uh, um, would use the knife because if it's too small to make it look really uh, like a perfect nose. It's just kind of a small character nose. But then when you get when you get to something a little bigger than this, then it's time to put in a little more extra effort on the nose. Now I want to keep digging deeper because I want to I want to bring the head down, the face way down, bring the nose and the cheeks up is what I'm going to do. So. Like I said, we're just getting so we know what the heck we're doing here, but all out of that is probably going to end up going away. I think, uh, I wonder if I'm ready for that. I'm almost ready for it. Let me clean this up and then I'm going to get going on the face. I'd like to do the face first. I mean, the, the general rule is you want to make sure everything is right before you start doing detailing. That's true. But uh, sometimes I like to do certain things to um, know where everything goes. Yeah, it's too bad that uh, you screw something up and then you got to take something you did that was really nice off. I'll deal with that later. But, <sighs> down it goes. But as for right now, I want to bring the head out. Now you'll notice that the head is, I'm, I don't want to, I'm just cleaning this up a little bit. Uh, I don't like to clean up the head, the back too much because, you know, if you have the slip of the knife and the nose come off, you have more wood and so on and so forth. This particular character, I mean, I, the face is going to go farther back. So far back, I ran my hand into the, into the camera. So he's going to be like about here is where the, um, the general, general thing is about a, a, the, the ear, we're not going to carve the ear, but on the other hand, we still have a lot of room here before we have to worry about the ear. And so what I'm going to do is the ear starts about halfway between the skull and here. And if, uh, let's say if the skull was here, then the ear would have started about here. So we've got, so we got all of this to play with. And I still want to have a little bit of a sideburn there. So we'll just, we'll take off more if we have to. All of this is going to go away. And the head is going to, like I said, the cheek's going to come up, the nose going to come up, the eye is going to go back in. Same on this side. So like all of this is going to go away, and we're what we're going to do is we're going to block that out. In other words, we're going to take our knife straight down, take our knife straight down, and then you'll see the corner, you know, there'd be the, the corner, if you could see through this, the corner would be right there. And then we will shape after that. But right now... Am I in the, make sure I'm still, you'll see me here. If I'm out of the way. 
And <clears throat> I'm probably going to do this in almost one hit. Well, not, not, not that much. But if it takes you a couple of hits to get, get it through, that's okay. I mean, it's not like you have to worry about having to do this in one cut. I'm going to just stop that right there. We'll trim that later, and then we need to cut this right here. That didn't pop out as well as I wanted it to. No, it's not popping out. Come and Z. Well, then we're going to have to take it one chip at a time then. Fine. You see, there's where I put the knife mark right there. You kind of notice that sometimes I cut towards my hand, which you're not supposed to, but uh, when I do that, like here, like when I do that, I've got this thumb holding. I mean, if you're not sure, if you're like basically a beginner, don't do this. I mean, this is after your... The other thing um, that I, I tell students is, uh, and it's, it's kind of a dumb thing to say, I mean, it's an obvious thing to say, but I'm going to say it anyways, is you always cut what you want to cut off. So I want to cut from here to here and I and I think about that. I'm not thinking about just putting the knife in and then just let it fly. I think about where it's going to stop and then be careful and and aim at stopping at that. It's not a matter of putting the knife in and push and see what happens. <sighs> see how that is starting to come out already? Would my even push? Uh, no, I think that might be all right. I was gonna say push back even farther, but I don't think so. Okay, side one, side two. Deep. Yeah, I'm gonna carve this out. I want to be careful about carving too deep this way because if we want to go deeper, we don't want to get into the head. Again, it's okay for him to have a scar, but I'd like to—I would like it for it to be a slip instead of a—I mean, uh, not a, I mean, opposite of slip. That uh, I want it to be that way instead of it being a slip. Blah, 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 blah. And again, if you feel more comfortable with a chisel doing this instead of a knife, go right ahead. <sighs> At least my aim is to show you where you want to cut and why. Well, there's going to be more cleaning up going on. I do have a visor. I hope you all have a visor. Put it over your head and uh, get a detailing knife and really clean it up. Kind of interesting as of... Uh, the last couple of years or a couple of years ago I was think I discovered that for the first time and holy smokes all the other stuff I carved before that it's all junk. Ugh. Getting there. Um uh, okay I want to stop with the face right now because uh yeah I can see what we can do with the face but let's get see it's starting to get a little too wacky here on the for the mustache so I better commit to the mustache right now. Or I lose it. Give it a nice little happy Santa face. Santa mustache. And I don't think he would like that. Yeah, I think there's more one on this side. That's why it looks so... That's why it looks so... F yeah, I'll have to do something about that later. Here's the center line. And then this particular mustache will go. I'm not going to have show his mouth, so we don't have to do worry about the mouth in this one. Now, what I'd like for it to do, make sure I'm still in the camera there. 
is where to come in and then you could if you want to do a, a little tie in the mustache too if you want to get a little crazy there we're not going to do that for this video I have it coming to an end here like other ones I might have it kind of flare out a little bit uh, instead of it come, coming to a point it'll come to a a flat sort of like I, like I got here have it come up here and maybe go in different direct three different directions from there but uh, just wanted to I think that's enough and we will shape it later all of a sudden he's starting to look like a Viking well at least right now it's in pencil. He's starting to look like a Viking. Let me put my chisel glove on and commit to this. Make sure you turn that chisel when you need to. Is that light? I don't know if I need to bring the light a little more. I just kind of, I just want to make sure that I got decent shadowing. The shadow is a positive thing and not a negative thing here. Because I keep bumping into it and we're committing to, to the mustache. So it's almost like we could say we're blocking things out, or micro-blocking, or because that's the best way to do that. Sometimes when I have this chisel in my hand doing something like that, I think, well, let me do a little extra here. You can do that too. Yeah, I'm kind of like a guy who uh, I'm trying to save as much time as possible. Yeah, I got this chisel in my hand. I might as well do an extra one of those while I got it. Oh, I neglected to do this. I would have discovered it. Boy, look at him go. Again, I just want to take the chisel. Now the, the beard, the, the mustache is going to be much thicker. I am, like I said, we're doing a lot of this for the sake of committing to where the where things are. And then once you do that, then you can kind of take a look back and take a st step back and how deep do you want that to go? How much deeper? Let's go easier. Well, I got that right there. And so that's what we're doing is we're just bringing stuff out. Get that out of there. sharp I got a little doohickey going on there let's do this side I think we're gonna have to do some adjustments like I said the beard and the mustache it's all imperfect so so if you goof up you can kind of fix it a little bit while I'm at it I'm just gonna do a little scoop right here Remember I wanted to scoop that? Like I said, that's what happens, is that I pick up a tool, and yeah, that's good for this now. Mm -hmm.